24. What? That's 24 you've lit up since 5 this morning. You know, your mouth must be like an ashtray. Seen too many Clint Eastwood movies. Well? Nothing, sir. Neither in nor out for two and a half days. And no phone calls. But they're still in there. Not even a flea squeezed out. Damn. Of course, they could have rumbled us. They're still sitting in this stuff. Must be. Yeah, if it was in there to start off with. It's in there, all right. Yes, sir. Whatever you say, sir. Any chance of a relief team, sir? I mean, it's been two and a half days now, you know. Right, then. We'll go in. Just two of you. Bodie and Doyle. Bodie and Doyle are going in. Stand by, cover them. Understood. Standing by. OK, move. Listen, you two. Alive. I want them alive. Easy with those damn things. Clint Eastwood, eh? What? Nothing, sir. Just wishing them luck. So what are you waiting for? Printed invitations? We didn't fire a shot, sir. They just killed over. Anyone else? No. Incendiary and demolition. One of the new marks, American. Napalm and HE. Only they didn't have time to prime it. They intended to blot out the place. And us. It's carrying keenness a bit far, isn't it? Heroin. That's a new factor. Prussic acid. Looks like they went out in suicide tablets. Fanatics. Madmen. Takes all sorts. I'll go in there and see what you can find, buddy. Sir. Well? Clean as a whistle. So they didn't use the stuff. Didn't need to. They had their cause to keep them high. Well, why bring their cause to London? We're a bargain. You can buy anything here. I was so damn tolerant. It takes a massacre to get it up on the ground. Where they are, sir. Oh, brand new. And expensive, very, very expensive. Oh, my God. Yes, there's more in the other crates. We're talking several thousand quids worth in this room alone. Counter-terrorist intelligence estimates that this is only one of several dumps in London. What are they trying to do? Start <laughs> World War III? It's worth a fortune, though. <laughs> They're big and dangerous, this bunch. They're highly organized execution squads. And this stuff doesn't come into the country in dribs and drabs. It's a well-oiled operation, massively financed and papered with untraceable funds. <laughs>
hiding in the <laughs> corner expecting to get thumped. Come on, Sammy. You know better than that. Not from your lot. I was chased by a pair of Arabs. Hello, Mr. Garford. How are you, Gav? Oh, Billy. Hey, keep it down in there, all right? Oh, Gav. Come on, Billy. Let's have you. Come on. It's not like you, is it? Get rumbled on the job, good cat man. They were killers, Mr. Garbett. I trod right in it. Yes, right in it, son. Buckets full with your form. <laughs> Coley. I see you were. How many dead? Is he? Well, keep him alive. And Alex, get Bodie and Doyle round to my house now. I idea what the time is. Yeah, try not to think. Sometimes I wonder if it's all worth it. Yeah. Be nice to get eight hours sleep on the trot for once, wouldn't it? Not that you'd use it for sleeping, of course. Oh, I would. Nothing I like better than curling up in bed with a good book. Glad to hear you've been spending your spare time so profitably, Doyle. Good morning, sir. We'll go in my car. Where are we going? A nice trip into the country. Eccleston Manor. Oh, champagne breakfast. There are five Arabs bleeding all over the lawn at the manor. So what were they doing after midnight at an English stately home? Sounds as if they've been ambushed. And with no idea who they might be? I've got ideas, all right, but no proof. What I want to find out is where all these weapons are coming from. Look, sir, I am very sorry. I'm only trying to... It's a bit late for all in the drums, isn't it? Let's go! I'm going to see my... Don't put him in the interview, interview room. Lock him in the cell. Go, Wait for the inspector. Okay, go. Just because they bought half London, they think they own the rest. Now, come on, Sammy. Let's have a statement, eh? I'm tired and I'm hungry. What's the matter with you? He's an Arab. Well, I don't know, I suppose so. Well, what's he been clubbing on? Well, I, drunk and disorderly. You're joking, Garbett. What? Drunk and disorderly, an Arab? Well, he's high on something, I don't know. What you on about? Hey, come on, you're wasting time. Sit down. Well, I could go another cup of tea. <sighs> come on. Right, go. Now, come on, Sammy, let's get on with it. You give me a statement, then I can go home. And remember, you were caught on the hop. No argument, no deals, right? And I'm bloody tired. Tell him, Mr. Garvey. I'll tell him all to Inspector Truitt. I've got to see him. It's important. You're trying to pull something, aren't you? Look, you know me as well as you know Truitt. I've pulled you often enough, haven't I? Listen, you've got something to say, give it to me. You've got no weight. You've got no rank. I've got something big to spill. What are you on about? I want to see Inspector Truitt now. Sergeant, if Mr. Bladen requests an interview with a more senior police officer, then Who we... Who the must... hell are you? All in our power to accommodate him, mustn't we? Who is this man? My name is Pullman, Peter Pullman, of Pullman, Sinclair, Dorset and Pullman solicitors, and Mr. Bladen's legal advisors. I've spoken to the desk, Sergeant. What? You're going to represent him? Yes. And now, if I could have a private chat with my client, perhaps in the meantime you could get hold of Inspector Truitt for us. So what happened to George Mooney? He always takes care of me. An East End hack isn't going to be much help this time. They want to throw the book at you this trip, won't they? So who sent you? Who do you think? 
Marge, eh? <laughs> Good old Marge. She has to look after me. She has to, doesn't she? Now, to business. First off, I don't want to stay here. With your record, Sammy, bail is not going to be easy. I'm not worried about that. It's, I'm not safe here. Not safe? Oh, I don't think the police would dare to lay a hand on you. I'm not worried about the cops. I'm not going down those cells, not here. You're looking after my welfare. Well, why you see to it? I'm not leaving this room till Inspector Truitt gets here. Nine mil parabellum. Looks like new stock must be West German. Sprayed enough of the stuff around, didn't they? Yeah, well, they're trying to make a point, aren't they? I think they made it. The one they wounded. Said there were three attackers, always submachine guns. You know, if they're going to argue, why can't they do it in their own backyards? Fair enough of this kind of thing happening across the Irish Sea. You no, know, it's going to get worse before it gets better, isn't it? Unless we get to the money, man. Yeah. Politics. Whatever happened to the good old round table, eh? I mean, you can't talk and shoot at the same time, can you? Whatever happened to the UN and the good old conference table? Ran out when 9 mil Parabellum came in. And that's that. He didn't tell us anything we didn't know already. The usual terrorist pattern. Call, sir. Oh, excuse me. What is it? An inspector through it, Met, South Kent Division. Another attack? No, it's information this time. CTI referred him. I'll only speak to you. Hello, this is Carly. What is it, Inspector? Oh, I'm sorry to trouble you, sir, but uh, I think this could be urgent. The CTI oh, simply... Anyway. Yes, go on. Well, we picked up an ex-con last night, name of Sammy Blayton. He's a cat man. Old school, but still very good. I've known him for years. He's cool, professional. And he's not so cool right now. Get to it, Inspector. I'm up to my ears in trouble here. Yeah. Well, it seems he's stumbled on some information and it scared the daylights out of him. I think he's playing it straight, sir. He wants to do a deal, of course, but uh, I believe you might want to do business with him. All right, what's he got? Well, I don't think it's uh, wise to pass it over the phone, sir. Did CTI tell you what I'm working on? Yeah, they hinted. And this is relevant? I'd say so. I'll send one of my boys. Uh, no, sir. Uh, Sammy won't have that. You see, he's... Uh, well, he's read about you, and... Uh... What do you mean, Sammy won't have that? Who the hell does he think he is? It's big, sir. Really big. It's worth the effort. It had better be to it. Half an hour. Alex, check out one Samuel Augustus Bladen, will you? Small-time villain, Londoner, plenty of form. Oh, and Alex, while you're about it, get me all the background you can on Frank David Truitt. T-R-U-I-T-T. Detective Inspector with the Met. Right. If this is a fool's errand... Uh, hang on, sir. Someone coming through. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, got it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. This is uh, true, it's uh, an old-style copper. Worked his way up from the beat. Good record. So what about this pet crim of his? Samuel Thomas Bladen. Habitual criminal, been in and out of the nick all his life. Uh, this is the last bit of fresh air he'll enjoy if he's wasting my time. Oh, they'll try anything. Yeah, who goes gunning for a cat, man? Yeah, and a metropolitan nick. <laughs> what did Anson get off our two bodies? Ah, uh, nothing, sir, not a thing. Clothes from a chain store, labels turn off, no documents, no papers, no identification, no rings, nothing. Lab report just says, two males, Middle Eastern origin, mid-30s. Same every time. Yeah, cause of death, prussic acid. Either that or they blow their heads off with a stick of jelly. They run around armed with an arsenal of first-class weapons involving us and half the coppers in Europe and their squabbles, and we can't nail them. Nothing, Sammy, nothing. I thought I saw something for him. Nothing. Yeah, if you say so. Look, Sammy, if you're pulling one over me, I'm sticking my neck right under the blade. This is a hard man we're going to see. Hard and powerful. Yeah, so are those two gorillas. They're a nightmares. Complete with shooters. Creeping hell on. I lost ten years' growth last night. Says you're right. Here, are you sure? Nothing, Sammy. I've been watching. I've seen him in Beth. 
Mars and Moons. Well, not exactly. Even if he was due, he wouldn't be the day to ask him for a rise, would he? Hey, wait a minute, it is due. Hey? The rise. What? Three weeks ago. Ah, oh, forget it. I've still got a month old expense sheet he hasn't signed yet. Ah, uh, here they come. Stoppage. What's always happening with these weapons? They're supposed to be reliable. Hey. Thanks. That's a nice piece of hard work. It's purpose built to me. Take a few weekly installments to buy this one. Where you go? Looks Middle Eastern. Labels torn off. No documents, usual story. Well, nothing, and he's dead. Oh, great! Oh, I should have let him kill you. The one tangible thing we know is that Sammy Bladen had information that cost him his life. He passed it on to Tewitt, and the inspector died too. I would have burnt out old lag and vital information about terrorists. He was picked up in a fashionable suburb. He'd just done a job, maybe several jobs. Maybe he found something, saw something in one of the houses he'd just turned over. An arms cut? In a high rental area? Impossible. We're going to find out. We've got to backtrack. What did Sammy do? Where had he been? Who did he see? Oh, he's a pro, sir. He's going to cover his tracks. So uncover them. You took your time. We've been here ten minutes. Sorry, sir. You know, I've got this itch, and I can't scratch it yet. You know what that means? It means no one's going to get much rest till I do. That itch tells me we might be on the verge of a real break. A raid on the Leicester Road place, the shootout, Inspector Tewitt, Sammy Bladen. That's the route. Find the links, backtrack. Backtrack. Just there, that's when we picked him up. It's a muse, dead end. Did he give any trouble? No, he never did. He's scared, of course. But I... But what? I was going to say, most villains get panicky when you nick them. But that wasn't Sammy's form. I mean, he, he was more philosophical about it. Regarded being nicked as an occupational hazard. And this time? No, he was jittery. Dead jittery. The two beat officers said when they spotted him, he had his arms over his head as if we were going to do him over. Was he ever done over by you lot? No. You know what he means? Yeah, I know what he means. Sammy wasn't like that. You didn't have to use force with him. I told you, he's more philosophical about it. But last night was different, yeah? Yeah. 
so. Well, he was definitely more panicky. Panicky? Yeah, we had a foreign geezer in here on a D and D. He burst into that room over there, and Sammy went as white as a sheep. What sort of foreign? Middle Eastern, Arab, probably. Well, there's a lot of them about. You still got him? Of course I have, and he went up before the beat this morning. Find 20 quid, he had a lot of money on him. We'll need his name, address, fact sheet, anything you got. Charlie? Yeah? Get us that file on the D&D. &D. Which one? The Arab, last night. That's a pretty classy area. Yeah, millionaire's ghetto. Aristocrats, American businessmen. That's why we put foot patrols on over there. Surely someone's screaming by now. I mean, this is quite good quality. Someone must have reported a break-in. Yeah, it's good quality. It's not exceptional. I mean, that was Sammy's M.O. He'd never nick the obvious glittery bits. He'd get the stuff he could flog easy. Shouldn't be at all surprised that the owners don't even know they've been done yet. What about his known associates? No, he was a loner. How do you know? Because he had a pad on the patch I used to work. Only one other person knew him better than me. Inspector Truett. Yeah. Wrong. Every professional thief's got a pet fence. Who handled this stuff? Look, I can't. What? She's a very valuable grass. One of your own divisional officers has been killed. I bloody know that, son. I've just had to tell his missus. So? Marjorie Harper. She looked after all his stuff for years. All right, let's go and see them. It's not going to be easy, I tell you. Not at all easy. Nothing ever is for us, mate. I know this place. They leave your hubcaps and take the car. Not as bad as it looks. Up and coming area, this is. You could have fooled me. What is it? I don't know. I think we've been tabbed ever since we left the station. You'll have been tabbed, all right. But you'll know we're coming. Marge! Marge? One here's Elf, and that one's called Herbert. Marge's own personal Berlin Wall. Nobody gets past them. Oh, nice. Very nice indeed. Hello, Marge. These aren't your lot, are they, George? No, no. Different brand. What are they after? Sammy Bladen snuffed it. I heard. They want to know who fingered him. Oh. They're keen, you see. Very keen. But muscle-bound with it. All flesh, no brains. So you brought them here? I had to. Good looking one, this. I bet the birds are just putty in your hands, aren't they? Uh, well, that's more his department. Oh, no. I mean, you've got something. I spotted it right off and I'm very fussy. You've got something. You'd better come in. Well, I'm off back to the station. I'll leave you boys to Marge's tender mercies. Thanks, George. Little drink, eh? How special. I concocted it myself. Marge is lightning. Mm. Gin rum and green chartreuse. Very sexy. What's your name, Sunshine? I'm Doyle, he's Bodie. Do you know my line of business? Well... Oh, I expect Garby to have told you. I'm a dealer, and I'm not very fussy who I deal with. Oh, I get busted now and then, but... I'm very useful to them, and they go easy on me. Now, that's public knowledge. Hey, the old, and... We've got to come to terms. Yeah, we, we we need a bit of help. You see. Oh, I could help you, lover. Anything for you. Uh, but you got the one who did Sammy in. Yeah, uh, but only the one who pulled the trigger. I've been.
been dealing with Sammy for years and he didn't deserve that poor little run. Anyway, he wasn't big enough for it. Yeah, well, you see, Sammy discovered something. And whatever it was, it was important enough to send a gunman after him, no matter what the risk. Something he told Inspector Truett. Something he saw or heard last night. Yes, he was working last night. Do you know where, Mud? Of course I know. Of course I know where he was last night. <laughs> Difficult life, woman on her own. I've always had to make my own way, and I've got through four husbands in the process. The third was a ponce. <laughs> Very pretty, but well, a ponce just the same. He wanted to send me out onto the streets to tart for him. You'd have made a fortune, Marge. Ah, oh, that's one of the nicest compliments that anyone's ever paid me. I always like to pick my own gentleman friends. You see, I'm very discerning. What's that? I'm just making some notes. No notes. You know, I haven't made up my mind about you yet, sonny boy. Pretty enough, yes, but you've got shifty eyes. Discerning, I may be, but I'm putting my head on a block for you. You sure he's all right? Yeah, yeah, he's, uh, all right, Marge. All right, then. But no notes. No notes. I set up two jobs for Sammy last night. Very smart. Sammy liked doing smart places. Top civil servants, industrialists, diplomats' homes. He made a speciality of them. 24, Baymal Terrace. The London home of Sir Lionel Laverton. Industrialist, munitions dealer. Munitions? Hmm, sells everywhere. His wife keeps some very nice stuff around the house. A good alarm system, though. You can see where I've marked all the wired up doors and windows. For a pro like Sammy, it was a piece of cake. Where did you get this, Marge? You mind your own business. You know, I'm still not sure about him yet. Believe me, Marge, you can trust him. Well, if you say so, dear. Only if you say so. What about the second job? Ah, now that was just around the corner. Eight Haverly Close, foreign diplomat. <laughs> you know, they never think they're going to get done. They always imagine that they're immune or something. Again, good wiring. But it's got some holes in it. You can see where I've marked them off to show Sammy. What have you done them both? What time has he nicked? Around 2 a.m. Oh, yes, he'd have done them both. Which one would he have done first? Oh, I've no idea. He would have pleased himself. He would have been watching for the lights to go out. Wait, clear off you. diplomat and a millionaire industrialist bother to gun down an insignificant little thief like Sammy. Why would they go to the bother? Well, I don't know, Marge, but there's got to be some connection. Marge. Better get a rundown on both of them. You've got troubles, love. What sort of troubles? You've got a tail. A couple of very nasty-looking gents in a car outside. I knew it. Well... Do you want my boys to fix them? No, no, Mars, just leave them alone, OK? All right, if you say so, love. But if you go the way of Sammy, I should be very upset. Thank you. Nice boys like you are few and far between. Louts are everywhere. Go away! Get back! 
turn the engine off. What? Turn the engine off. We're calling a bomb squad. When did he get here? Arrived at Heathrow about half an hour ago. Says he'll meet you as arranged in 40 minutes. Right, out. Good to see you, Miller. Hi, Mr. Carley. Thanks for getting here so quickly. I appreciate it. How was Africa? Uh, chaotic as ever. Profitable chaos for you, no doubt. Bodie's still alive, then. I wouldn't have put money on that a few years ago. <laughs> he wasn't working for me, then. He told you what I'm after. Yeah, whether well, it's what you want. How well, do you tell me? We're talking about small arms, right? Correct. Well, in the last three months, I've set up three deals. One for a guy called Joe McKenzie, a yank. And what was in the package? Uh, machine guns, anti-tank guns. Anti-personnel mines, mortars. The buyer? Cuban exiles, guys with more money than cents. <laughs> oh, another was for Sir Arnold Laverton. Yeah, I thought that might make waves. I oh, know him in a roundabout sort of way. Mm, that I can believe. Big deal, that was. Mostly 9 millimeter light automatic stuff. Some heavier shooters, but mostly 9 mil. Who was the other party? Oh, um, I was just a contact. Laverton wanted them to sell to someone else. He was approached, but he doesn't manufacture that sort of stuff. He's big league. But not too big to make a few bob on the side, eh? Mm -hmm. Who is, Mr. Cowley? Who is? You mentioned three deals, I think. Arab, Abdi Khalil. Tell me about Mr. Khalil. I don't think he's your man, Mr. Cowley. The guns never came into this country. Are you sure? Well, sure as you can be about anything. I set up the deal with a Swiss-French consortium. The arms were shipped straight out to the Persian Gulf. I bet money they never went any further. I see. And that's it. Sorry I can't help you any more. Oh, that's all right. You've been very helpful. Any time, Mr. Cowley. Ah, it's nice to see old London again. Truett's family? Yes, sir. I'm godfather to this one. Sad business. Yes. His desk untouched, notes, everything? Yes, sir. Well, the Arab gentleman, the one on the drunk and disorderly, I gather he's disappeared. Yes, he has. When they locked him up, any more bother? No, sir. I just thought he was sleeping it off. Case notes on Sammy. Uh -huh. Peter Pullman. Pullman, Sinclair, Dorset. Sammy's solicitor has bid up market for someone like him. Yeah, I thought that. A lot of villains come in with fancy lawyers these days. Look him up. I'd like to know a wee bit more about him. Right, sir. Oh. Narrow squeak, lads. Have they saved the car? Yeah. Don't think we'll be putting him for the bomb squad, though. What have you got in the two break-ins? Oh, uh, the arms man, Laverton. Uh, he's got a clean sheet, but there have been suspicions of sanctions busting. Roundabout deliveries, the usual fiddles, you know, buying political influence. Hmm? And the other one? Oh, Kabil Kamami. Had trouble with that lot ever since the Yom Kippur War. All we got on him personally is he gets around a lot gambles. I think he likes the social scene here. Well, let's hope he'll be out socialising tonight. I want you two to do a Sammy on him, on both of them. You'll have to get into both places unofficially. Hey. Eh? You are joking, aren't you? Sammy's a professional. Yeah, and Sammy's a bit dead just now. So you'll just have to be a little more careful. Breaking and entering? Uh, just entering. You don't have to break anything. Ah, oh, look, I don't think so. And keep your eyes open. Oh, it's not as difficult as it sounds. Your girlfriend will set it up for you. Wish you wouldn't call her that, sir. From what I gather, Doyle, Marjorie Harper won't let any harm come to you. Look, sir, I do think this is a job for an experienced catman. Yes, but unfortunately, I don't have too many catmen in my squad body. We have to get into those two houses. I have to know what it was that Sammy saw. You have to get in quickly, quietly, and find it. I don't think we're the right men for the job, sir. Yeah, they've rumbled us, sir. I mean, they tried to splatter us across yeah. London. Absolutely. Now, they'll be wearing a couple of tails, sir. They've had one go at us already. As soon as they find out we're alive, they'll be after us again. 
How we can cope with that, providing we get a clear run. I'll look after your bombers. I'll run an intercept squad and keep your back free. You'll get your clear run. Very reassuring. Go on. Go and see Marjorie. Get it teed up. Yeah, well, I just like to say, uh, don't what? go for this at all. I'll make a note of that. Oh, well, why are you making a note of that? Perhaps you could find the moment to sign my expense chit. Yes, yes. What are you doing? Just calling Lewis and Marriott, Interceptor Squad. They're standing by. They know the routine for this sort of job. Put it down. You heard what I said? They can't go on this caper with a pair of bomb-happy uglies on their tail. They have to. You're setting them up, sir. You said you'd give them a clear run. I've got to draw the opposition, Anson. Draw them right out. Even if I do have to set up Bodie and Doyle. Do you have to take those things? Afraid so, Marge. Shooters. I hate them. I'm not mad about them myself. Well, just you take care of my boy. Do you hear me, Bodie? I'll nurse him like his mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's just talk about Sammy's technique, shall we? Right. Cupboards and drawers. That's all he went for. Don't touch any safes or strong boxes. Don't lift any pictures or ornaments. They're mostly wired to the alarms. Only go through the windows I've indicated. All the others have got magnetic switches to them. And look out for pressure pads under the carpets. <laughs> it took Sammy all his life to learn all this. Oh, we'll manage. I wish I had your blind faith, mate. Do Laverton's place first. They've gone to the city to a reception. It doesn't finish till one. Yeah, well, let's hope they don't get bored. Then do Kamami's. Well, he's going out too, is he? Oh, charming. No, but he's a drinker. He drinks like a fish. He's usually senseless by about 11 o'clock. And then he sleeps like the dead. All the staff are at the back. Marge, Muslims don't drink. Hmm, not in public. But in his residence, this one drinks like there's no tomorrow. Just our luck for him to get a conscience tonight. You know, Sammy was very good. I don't expect that Laverton or Kamami even know they've been done yet. I bet that they're not even... Wrong. Well, one of them knows. It's time. I hope you boys are getting well paid for all this. Saw a point. Mate. Marge said Sammy could open one of these in four seconds flat. We've been up here a fortnight. Yeah, well, I'm not Sammy. I'm not Raffles either. This is not my line, you know. to shoot burglars, aren't they? Cupboard and drawers. Okay. looking for. Bloody hell. What? What is it? They didn't go to the party. Let's go. Hang on. I take sleeping tablets. We might still be all right. Right. Let's go. Did you get it? Yes, sir. Is that him? Yes, sir, that's him. Peter Pullman, Sammy's solicitor. Had to be. He's the one who made you get Inspector Truitt. No, Sammy asked for him first. He wouldn't talk to me. He asked for Truitt. But Sammy had some information. He wanted to do a deal. So he could have talked to Pullman about that. Yeah, I suppose he could. So Pullman could have known about my rendezvous with Truitt. Yes, he could have done, but Marge sent him. Did she? Feed that through the computer, will you, Argent? I'm looking for a link between Peter Pullman and either Sir Lionel Laverton or Cabell Kamami. Yes, sir. Maybe Pullman's done some work for one of Sir Lionel's companies or represented someone at Kamami's embassy. I bet my pension they'll come up with something.
Abel 1 to Chaucer, over. Roger, Chaucer. This is Abel 1, over. Just on the Laverton place. As far as we can tell, it's all clear. Got it all clear. Pass that through to Carly, will you? Listen, Doyle, I can't do that. I've lost radio contact with him for the last 25 minutes. Listen, don't miss us about Anson. It's hairy out here. Straight up, Doyle. I don't know where he is. His last message was to proceed as planned. Over. Great. I mean, that's really great. Another thing. Your bombers. The interceptor squad isn't there. There's no one to cut him out. Beautiful. Well, don't you cut out, Anson. Over and out. I don't like the look of that place. Yeah, we know what they say, don't you? First one's difficult, the rest's plain sailing. Yes, mate. But now we know that that one's the prize package, don't we? Yeah, well, let's get it over and done with, shall we? It's the Arab. They met four years ago. The Pullman set up a currency deal for him. It's Kamami's place. They're already there, sir. Do we bust in? Can't. Not yet. Diplomatic territory. I'm waiting for clearance. In the meantime, we stand by. Drag you away. It's got it. Oh, thank you. Yes. Oh, look 
Look at this. Buy a lot of guns with this lot. Yeah. <clears throat> Raffles. Breaking and entering two nights in a row, really. It's too bad. You know, the increase in crime is very worrying. Even diplomatic residences appear to be no longer immune from intruders. The not when you've got a dope factory in the pantry. Finish them. Now. Are you crazy? It's the logical place. Not in my house! <laughs> I'm sorry, sir, but there was a disturbance reported. We thought we'd better come right in. Okay. Oh. My ambassador will make a formal protest, I can assure you. Your ambassador is probably up to his ears in this business, Mr. Kamame. He'll be far too busy answering questions from our people to do any protesting. But I think he'll leave you and Pullman to carry the can for this little lot. About 20 quid a pop in the open market for this muck. That represents a lot of guns and ammunition for your gunman. No heroin, no money, no arms. QED, Mr. Kamami. All nice and businesslike. Contacts, cover names and addresses. Our anti-terrorist mob are going to have a field day, aren't they? Didn't get far, sir. Got friends outside. The inimitable Marjorie Harper. How do you know? I phoned her earlier. Wanted to ask her about the lawyer she got for Sammy Bladen. She'd never heard of Pullman, Sinclair, Dorset and Pullman. I expect that set her worrying. Where's Doyle? I think he's in love, sir. My baby, you're bleeding. I know. Look, I've, I've, um, I've got to go now. I've got to make my report. Oh. Huh? 